Hi, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of Game and Interactive Media Design. And so this should be the last... Oh gosh, now that I said that, there might be one more. But I'm hoping this is the last video. Essentially, we're done modeling. This looks fairly decent. This looks at least very much similar to, if not this, because we don't have wood texture. It does look a lot like this table here. Um... What I want to do now is export this to a game engine. And right now there's nothing in our scene. There aren't any lights or anything like that. But just to get into the habit, if I do have multiple objects in the scene, like sometimes I make, you know, five different versions of a table and I just want to export one thing, I'm going to select everything here. Oops, I changed into a marquee selection. I don't like marquee selection. I'm going to change that to lasso. I'm going to select this entirety and now I have every single thing selected and what I want to do is go to file export export selected uh, before I do that just make a note here the world is at I'm gonna tap G to get the grid on this object is set to zero zero um, as in this point, when I export this FBX, this point here uh, is going to become the pivot point. And because I centered the tabletop to zero, zero, um, it's, it's going to be, it's already centered, right? I built it centered. And these legs begin at uh, Z equals zero, so they're always at the bottom. So when I select this and export it, when I bring it into an, uh, the game engine, it's it's already set to zero, zero. You'll see how that's important later. Um, export, export selected, and I'm going to choose, I've already done a few test cases, so I'm going to say, S, I'm going to call this ST05. Now, I just want to point out, you yours isn't going to look like this. Yours is going to be set to maybe Autodesk Media and Entertainment. And we can export a whole bunch of things. Um, smoothing groups, let's go ahead and do that. Smoothing groups, we haven't talked about it, but it's how game engines uh, kind of fake which objects are supposed to be smooth and which objects are supposed to be faceted. Now, Turbo Smooth is actually, you want to uncheck this. We used Turbo Smooth, so you might think, hey, we better check it so it uses it. But no, if it checks it, then um, I guess Unreal Engine and I think Unity, they don't natively use Turbo Smooth in, in their processing. So by checking this, I would have said, no, keep Turbo Smooth modifier on it in the FBX, and then the end mode will use it like, let Unreal Engine do Turbo Smooth. By unchecking it, we're actually baking the, the Turbo Smooth polygons and vertices into the FBX. Okay, so I want to uncheck that. And let's go ahead and check Triangulate. Uh, and then everything else we can kind of keep. We have no animation, so we don't need to uncheck that. We could if we wanted to. Uh, we don't have any cameras, so we don't need to uncheck cameras. Um, again, if we were exporting the scene, we might want to consider unchecking cameras and lights. I am, just because I'm showing you that you can do that. And if we had textures, we might want to bring those textures, but right now we have no textures, and we can just say OK. And when we do that, it says, hey, the plugin will tessellate meshes, um, turbo smooth meshes are tessellated. That's good. That means it's going to add all of that complicated geometry we added. Um, and we did that so our edges would be smooth and wood-like. Uh, and metal like okay now once we've exported that we can go into 3d uh, into unreal engine and again I'm assuming you've looked at some ue4 tutorials all we're gonna do is I created a folder called tables let's say you didn't have a folder called tables I'm going to go into my content folder I'm going to say add new folder call it uh, Stedman table or ST Oh, let's go ahead and call that Stedman. Double click in here, and I'm going to go ahead and import that one I exported, which I called it STO5 FBX. Say OK. Now, there are a couple things we need to note here. Number one, it's not a skeleton. 
Unreal Engine can figure out what kind of FBX this is, so it unchecked Skeletal Mesh for us. We do want a collision, because I didn't create one, um, so I don't have a collision mesh, so let's go ahead and have UE4 create one. Um, combine meshes is checked. If we unchecked that, let's just go ahead and do that. You can see what happens. And it's set to create new materials. Let's set this to do not create material and import all. So because I unchecked create like one combined meshes, like I'd have to build this. <laughs> I'd have to build this table all over again. And I'm not going to do that. So let's go ahead and delete this. Just delete all of that. Let's go ahead and import that once again. Make sure combined meshes is checked. We are auto-generating collision. Scroll down here and under material import method, let's create new materials. And that should be all we need. I'm gonna hit import all. It creates one mesh. It created two materials. I can drag this mesh into my scene. That static mesh, there it goes. And I can, for right now, I'm actually going to, the table was modeled correctly, um, but I'm going to set this twice as big just so we can see it a little bit better when we play it. If I click play, okay, there's our table with the dark and the brown material. Uh, okay, but what can we do? Let's say we want our our legs to be a little bit shiny. Now in the product itself, the legs are kind of, I guess that's a matte powder coat material. I think that's what it is. And so, but let's just say, hey, I want mine shiny. I want mine like chrome. What if I want chrome? Let's go ahead and build a chrome material. Uh, double click the material legs material that came into it. And this is very similar, uh, not very similar. The idea is similar um, here. So if you double click the material, it will open up the material editor in Unreal Engine. Go ahead and take a look at this. Here's our material base, and here is a color parameter. If we go back to 3D Studio Max and open up our material editor, here is our material base. Um, this actually, this diffuse color is the base color. Notice we have bump here, opacity, self-illumination, glossiness, specular. Notice in our Unreal Engine material we have specular, roughness, emissive is the self-illumination, normal is like bump. So we have a very similar type of material creation setup. This base color is actually the same or very similar to the diffuse color. Um, they're kind of the same concepts. But what we're going to do is go ahead and double click this gray slot and oh, let's keep it the same color. All we're going to do now is we are going to say, you know what? This is going to be metal and it's going to be not rough at all. And the way we do that in Unreal Engine, this is all we're going to go over today in Unreal Engine, is holding down the one key on your keyboard and left clicking anywhere in here. This is set to zero by default. It's a, it's a constant, a single digit or a single number con constant. And I'm going to drag this to metallic. Now, if it's set to zero, it's basically saying this is zero metallic or not metallic. But if I double click over here in my details and tap that to one, oops, not one slash one, then it's saying, Hey, this is very much metal and actually that looks kind of nice but if I want that to be reflective like chrome I'm going to add another constant by holding down one and left clicking and dragging it into roughness now that zero roughness is saying that is not rough at all it is highly polished chrome material and I'm gonna save that and it's gonna save we're going to come down here and that should have updated that material. I'm going to go ahead and play that. And because it's the legs are so dark, it's hard to see that material the way it is. If you want a really shiny, like visibly, you can see that chrome. 
then I'm actually going to double click into here, change the color to something a little bit lighter and bluer. Yeah, that should actually be a little bit nicer. And the other fun thing we're going to do, there it goes, is we're going to select the table in here and just say, you know what, this is going to simulate physics. Over in the details panel, when you have an object selected, you could tell it to uh, be a physical object or not. Well, first I'm going to say it's movable under transform. And then I'm going to set simulate physics. And that is going to allow me to play it and boom, 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 shoot that table. And there we go. We now have a table. Woo! Oh, I forgot I did that. Um, we now have a table in our scene and we can shoot it all over the place if we want to. So that's it. I hope you had a good time making a table using 3D Studio Max and Unreal Engine. There are some issues here, just so you know. I probably don't want as many polygons on this table. Um, I would probably, these little pieces in here, you see these lines, I would probably make this out of one piece of one box and bake these um, details into, uh, bake those details into the normal map, which is going to be covered, I will cover in a later video. Uh, hope you had fun, bye!